Hi, welcome to Quality of Life, Grace Teaching New Covenant Ministry. Today we are uh, going to talk to you about a topic. Um, <clears throat> we don't need rules or principles. We need a person. And um, the Apostle Paul, we're going to, you know, start this off by saying that, you know, Saul... <clears throat> And Paul were the same, except for Saul, before Christ, um, was self-righteous, and he was a religious leader um, before he met Jesus. Um, it's only when um, Saul met Jesus did he become Paul, and of course, Paul means small. See, before Christ, Saul saw Jesus as just a mere man or a prophet that died on a cross. But then when he met Jesus, and Jesus showed up to uh, Saul on the road to Damascus um, and blinded him and revealed to him um, who he really was, he said to uh, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? You see, Saul was out on his way to persecute Christians at that time. And, um, and so he blinded him. And Jesus revealed to, the, to Saul um, who he really was. And at that time, um, Saul saw who Christ really was. And, and so he saw him as a lot bigger than he realized he, um, than he realized ever before. Um, so my, the topic, I'm going to call this um, behavior or Jesus. You see, Saul was into behavior um, before Christ. But then when he met Jesus... It was all about grace through faith. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I want to go to a verse in Colossians. Now the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Colossae. And he writes in uh, chapter 2, verses 20 through 23. And so I'm going to read there. He says, You have died with Christ, and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion by a self-denial and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's fleshly desires. Um, and so what he's, what he's doing here is... The Apostle Paul is, first of all, writing to the church at Colossae. These are Gentile Christians, and they... He's wanting them to leave self-sufficiency. See, the, uh, the church at Colossae, they are focusing on their behavior, what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. They're focusing on their behavior, um, principles, rules, and all he's trying to do, see, because he remember when he was Saul, he remembers that way of life. Um, he uh, was, the Apostle Paul was Saul, and, and so he, he observed laws and rule keeping. Um, and that was before Christ, but when he met Christ, he started learning how to trust Christ. And so, since he went through this himself, now he's going to go to the church at Colossae and unscramble them, so to speak, and get them back over to trusting Christ and dropping the rule-keeping and the regulations and the uh, uh, behaviors and the principles. And um, he wants their focus to change. You know, Romans 12, 2, the Apostle Paul said, uh, No longer be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So this is one of the reasons why he was doing what he was doing is he wanted to go into the church at Colossae and get their focus back off of behavior, rules, and principles and back on to Jesus Christ in the death, burial, and resurrection. Um, and so that was the whole point of it all. The first thing I wanted to take a look at is in, in the first part of that chapter um, when he says, You have died with Christ. First of all, um, Romans 6, 6 um, says, For the old self was crucified with him. Um, 
Galatians 2.20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live, but it's Christ who lives in me, and the life that I'm now living, I'm living by faith in the one who gave his life to me. Um, and so we have to remember, before Christ, um, we were sinners, but now in Christ, he removed that person we was. He's speaking about the old person you used to be before Christ. The sinner has been removed now. Okay, so to deny yourself is just to recognize that the old self that you were before Christ is dead, Romans 6, 11. Okay, and now in Christ, you're a new creature in Christ. That's what he's trying to stress the importance of. <clears throat> Get back on your identity in Christ and not rules and principles. The second thing I wanted to look at is we're free from the power of sin. Um, he says, and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. And so we have to remember that the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. It's 1 Corinthians 15, 56. And so, you know, you remember keep off the grass, right? Well, all that did was stimulate a desire to actually sin. And so if you want to add law to the Christian believer in Christ, that will fuel sin's engine to want to sin. So let go of the law and say hello to grace. Remember, law is self-sufficiency. Grace is trusting Christ. Um, the third thing I wanted to take a look at there is... Um, he says, so why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Um, these are just mere human teachings. Um, what he really is saying here is he wants the church off of their behavior. He wants them to stop focusing on principles and rules. And he wants them to start trusting Christ. That's what he wants to do. And so Romans 10.4, we have to remember that Christ ended the law um, so that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ is made right with God. Okay? So no more trying to gain God's um, acceptance and love and right standing through self-effort. It's by grace um, through faith in Jesus Christ. The fourth thing I wanted to take a look and the final thing was, um, he says, but... <clears throat> they provide no help in conquering the person's fleshly desires. Um, to have victory over this world, the flesh, and the devil as believers in Christ, we have to remember 1 Thessalonians 5.24, um, grace conquers flesh. Okay, and you've often heard it's the Spirit's job to fight our flesh, and this is what this means. I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians 5.24 to close this up. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Remember, our role as believers is to believe, first of all, that Jesus died for us, so he could give his life to us, so he could live his life through us. And remember, we are branches in a vine. The vine is in us. And now as we choose to live from that life-giving spirit, remember, it's all of Christ and none of us. Just let him live his life through you and experience the victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Thank you. This is the quality of life ministries. And we're the most important person here because without you, we could not teach. Remember, we learn so we can teach and we teach so we can learn. Thank you and God bless.